Good day to all my students. Today we are here to continue on the chapter Carbon Compounds Part 3 where in Part 1 and Part 2 teacher introduced you all to what is the meaning of carbon compounds, the meaning of hydrocarbon and also alkane. Teacher discussed in Part 2 regarding the chemical, sorry, the physical properties of alkane, how to write the molecular formula of alkane, homologous series. That's what teacher discussed in part 2. Now, in part 3, I will concentrate on the chemical properties of alkane. So, before we start, I would like to highlight that alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon. Since it's saturated, meaning all the carbon electrons has been shared by hydrogen. Hope you can understand this concept. Shared with hydrogen. Huh? So, hope you can understand this concept. So, that is the reason why carbon can only share 4 electrons maximum. So, in order to understand this, you have to go back to chapter 5, ionic and covalent bond in form 4. Now, so, let's go further. Now, you know that alkane is a saturated hydrocarbon, meaning all the electrons of carbon has been shared with hydrogen. Another concept that you have to remember is hydrocarbons are covalent compounds. Okay, so these are the two things that you need to remember. Now, let's continue on the two pro chemical properties of alkanes. Teacher would like to highlight here that alkanes are passive hydrocarbons. When I am discussing about alkenes, you will be surprised to find alkenes go through a lot of chemical reactions. Unlike alkanes. Why? Because alkanes are saturated hydrocarbon. So they have enough, they have shared enough electrons, carbon has shared enough electrons, thus carbon don't have to share anymore. So that is the reason why alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons and inactive. They are quite passive compared to alkenes. Now let's start. So the only two chemical properties of alkanes that I would like to discuss here first is combustion. I would like to highlight on how to balance the equation for combustion. So, as you know, combustion is where hydrocarbon is burned with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, so I would like to tell you here that combustion, we have two types of combustion which is complete and incomplete combustion. So, the examples that I am going to tell you here revolves around complete combustion. Incomplete combustion, you might be asking me, teacher, how to identify if it's a complete or incomplete combustion? Very easy. If you are looking at complete combustion, you will see the products of complete combustion consist of carbon dioxide and water only. Allow me to highlight here, only. The moment you see the products of carbon dioxide and water only during combustion, that is more than enough to show you that it is a complete combustion. So you don't need to crack your head whether it's a complete or incomplete combustion. And the examples that teacher going to show you is regarding complete combustion. All right. Okay, now, so as I told you, let's start. Huh? So teacher will give you two to three examples on how to balance the equation on complete combustion. Why? This knowledge will be helpful and useful when you are dealing with alkenes, combustion of alkenes, combustion of alcohol also. Right? Okay, now so let's go to one example where we assume propane. 
Okay, so hope you all know propane. Okay, if you don't understand, please watch teacher's part 2 video. Okay, propane goes through combustion with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide to produce carbon dioxide and water. Okay, now so can you see what am I doing here? I have written the products as carbon dioxide and water. Why? Because I assume this is a complete combustion. So the first rule to make it easier, how are you going to balance this equation? This is the correct equation. Okay. And balancing the equation is another matter. Alright. Okay. Now, so the first chemical properties of alkane is going through combustion. Now, how would you balance this? So, let me label here as number one. So, this shows that no matter whatever happens, you balance your carbon first. So, since you see a three here, don't worry, just add a three here. Now, number two, when I write number two, that means hydrogen, you are supposed to balance your hydrogen. Now, hydrogen is eight. So, here you will put four. Why? Four times two is eight, correct? Okay, now you have to remember the moment you have balanced your carbon dioxide and water, you have disturbed the balancing of oxygen. So, that is the reason why the means huh? you have already balanced your carbon and hydrogen. Unfortunately, your oxygen atoms are not happy. So, that is the reason why you have to calculate or try to balance oxygen from the product. Meaning, you have to make sure oxygen, how many atoms of oxygen is involved from the product. Thanks to you balancing it at the product. Okay, By balancing your carbon and hydrogen from the product. Okay, so 3 times 2, 6 plus 4 times 1. Here is literally 1. Huh? 4 times 1, 4. So, you get 10. So, I will bring it here and I will put 5. Okay, why 5? 5 times 2, you get your 10 back. Okay, so this is the easiest way to balance the equation when it comes to combustion of alkane. Please remember, this knowledge or this technique will be useful when you are trying to balance combustion equation for alkane and alcohol also. Now, let's go to second example. Another example I would like to give you all. Just let's go to a bigger molecule. Let's say C8H18. Okay, C8H18. Yes, C8H18. So, this is octane. Okay, it's a huge molecule. Huh? Octane. Now, I assume it is reacting with oxygen. This is combustion. Please remember when teacher put at oxygen, that means it's going through combustion. So, since it's a complete combustion, automatically I will write carbon dioxide and water here. Okay, water here. Now, let's balance this together. So, as you know the rule, first rule, balance your carbon. So, don't worry, just add an 8 here. Why? Purposely, the purpose is to Balance your carbon. Second is balance your hydrogen. So, 18. So, you will get a 9 here. Why? 9 times 2 is 18. Since you have disturbed. Okay. So, since you have disturbed the balancing of oxygen at the product. You have no choice but to calculate the amount of oxygen that has been added in the product. So, that is the reason why you have to calculate amount of oxygen here will be. 16 plus 9 which is 25 so you bring it here you will automatically get 25 over 2 why when you cut off these two you will be left with 25 now please remember sometimes some equations they don't prefer fractions to be in the equation so that is the reason why what you can do is you can times all this equation just because the purpose is they don't want to see a fraction in the equation but your answer is correct but it's just sometimes they don't like okay some people they don't like to see fraction in the equation so what you can do is you just times it with two 
right? So, then you get 2 C A H 18 plus 25 O 2 will produce 15 carbon dioxide plus 18 water. Okay, so 18 water correct. Okay, so 18 molecular water. This is how you balance it. Okay, so this is an example of the first chemical properties of alkane which is combustion. Now let's go to substitution reaction. So I hope you understand the meaning of substitute. Substitute is where something is taken away from its place. Another substance or another something else will be taking its place. Okay, so that's the meaning. That means I take out something from this place, another blue marker will be substituting. That means the place literally won't be empty. So that is the meaning. So substitution reaction is where carbon, uh, sorry, hydrogen atoms of an alkane is substituted by halogens, mainly chlorine atoms or bromine atoms. Please don't use iodine because iodine is very, very passive compared to chlorine and bromine. So, let's look at one example of how it happens. Huh? For instance, teacher prefer to use methane as an example. C4, sorry, CH4, you add, we just say, just say, teacher use chlorine. So, since only halogens are used, you will be surprised to find one atom of hydrogen is replaced by one atom of chlorine. So, let's look here. Or oh, might as well, I'll just write it in a different one so that you can see. Chlorine will be black. Alright. So, what happens is you will be seeing CH3 Cl plus H. Can you see? One hydrogen has swapped its, its place. Okay? They, they go to, they, they swap each other's place. Okay? And one chlorine will be started to attach to carbon already. Okay? Now, let's go to, now, let's, this is the first step. Now, since you have four hydrogens, you must have four steps to substitute all the atoms of hydrogen with chlorine so let's go to so that's the reason why another reason why teacher prefer to show you methane as an example all right now let's go to now in this you have to use the product of the first step which is c h3 c l you add with another you assume another atom chlorine is entering the picture okay to get CH2 Cl2 add with H Cl. Now can you see that amount of chlorine atoms has been added? Subsequently, can you see that amount of chlorine atoms has been increasing in the second step? And third step, you have to use the same substance. Where you get CH2, C, Cl2, you add with chlorine again. Just imagine another chlorine is entering the picture. Okay. To get CH, Cl3 plus HCl. So one hydrogen atom is pulled away from carbon. It is being replaced by one atom of chlorine. Okay. Now, I forgot to tell you. This is trichloromethane. Dichloromethane. Chloromethane. Chloromethane. Dichloromethane because two chlorine. Three chlorines. Trichloromethane. Okay. Original atom. Sorry. Original molecule. Methane. So, you use methane. 
Now let's go to the last. Okay. And again, you must know that you have to use the same. Okay, the product of the third step where CH Cl3 at chlorine 2 produce. So you get C Cl4 plus H. Okay, so now I hope you all, if you don't understand, please watch teachers videos repeatedly so that you can understand the process of substitution reaction. I would like to highlight that substitution reaction only happens with chlorine and bromine. Please don't use iodine, not reactive. Okay, now so I hope you can understand. Can you see that gradually for 3, can you see that gradually hydrogen decreases? Okay. Hydrogen decreases until the end. You don't have hydrogen at all. And you can find gradually amount of chlorine increases. And the name of this substance is tetrachloromethane. Why tetra? Because for chlorine, chloro, chlorine atom, methane, the original molecule it came from. If teacher did this with bromine, the name of this substance will be bromomethane, dibromomethane, tribromomethane, and tribromomethane. Sorry, tetrabromomethane. If teacher used bromine as an example, okay. So I hope you all can understand the chemical properties so remember alkane is saturated thus it is not very reactive so it only has two chemical properties which is combustion and substitution reaction only so it is important for you all to know how it is done especially the balancing of equation the knowledge to balance the equation is important why this will be useful when you are trying to balance equation for combustion of alkene and also alcohol which we will do in our other following parts of the carbon compound videos. Till then, thank you for watching. See you all.